Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ, in Him, in us, who believe on Him, and how we apply this existence to our physical world. The Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4, through 4, King James Bible. We are saved if we believe Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and rose the third day, according to the scriptures. Amen. The title of this study is The Disfigured Body of Jesus Christ at the Crucifixion. Dear Lord, thank you for your ultimate sacrifice for us, Lord. Thank you. We praise your name. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. I will go through this scripture in detail a little further in this study. We now open to 2 Corinthians chapter 5:21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the upholding all things by the word and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. John 14, 9, Jesus saith unto him, Hath I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, Show us the Father? There are some essential study blogs for the listener. I urge you to open in the description box the blog title. And in this blog, I have Who is Jesus Christ? Godhead versus Trinity by Cameron Moshvik. Read why I love Daniel 7.13 to debunk Trinitarians. Read and study the Trinity is pagan practice of polytheism in mainstream Christianity. Read my study, Jesus Christ, with whom, within whom dwells the Father. Read my study, The Shock and Awe of Paul in the Book of Hebrews, revealing more of the Lamb who was slain. And then read my study, To Know Him Who Laid the Foundation of the Earth. In all of these studies, it is more than clear there are not three gods in one, as the Trinitarians believe, and then changed the original Trinitarian theory to now they say there are three persons or three forms. No, there's only one person, there's only one God, there's only one form, and I'm going to go through the word form carefully, and the word person is in these studies, and that is Jesus Christ. He is God Almighty, the Ancient of Days. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's in my studies. Now, I know the study title is The Disfigured Body of Jesus Christ at Crucifixion, but if you're thinking Trinity, then this will be, will completely confound you and you will picture 
in your mind that God is three gods. There's the old man sitting on a throne. There was Jesus Christ that created Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ was human. All of this false teaching comes out of the perverted Bibles, not the King James, comes out of these Laodicean church from these Laodicean church pulpits. Now let's talk about Isaiah chapter 52 verse 14 and then we're going to read Isaiah chapter 53. So as many were astonished at thee, thee, this is Jesus Christ that Isaiah was talking about what 500 some 500 and some what years before Jesus was ever, ever came brought himself through the womb of the virgin and his visage means the image his image was so marred and marred means literally to be disfigured more than any man and his form that means his body more than the sons of men now I want to talk to you I had a question sent from one of my YouTube subscribers subscribers they emailed me and said hey what does it mean that his form more than the signs of men? They were asking a question here uh, regarding Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14. And they write, reading this scripture, um, the uh, correction, they said, what does this mean? And so I respond, reading this scripture, we understand that the sight of, the word visage means the sight of Jesus's marked up, ripped up, shredded, literally his disfigured body. The word form here means body. I've done the research. I urge you to do the same. Was more than any man and their descendants in all history, past, present, and future. Now, when once I read this scripture aloud to my 12-year-old daughter, and she said that it's very difficult to believe that Jesus' body was more destroyed and disfigured more than any other human being in the entire history, past, present, future. Nevertheless, we understand, we must understand that this is the infallible word of God, and we either believe every single word because it's inspired, we know that by 2 Timothy 3.16, and we either believe it, or we don't. And that is in the final authority of the King James Bible. Praise God that when I asked my daughter to stand on God's word to make a choice today, make a choice, either existing as a 100% without doubt that every word is inspired by God himself, that every word is God Almighty. Jesus Christ is the word, and doctrine is his teaching of his word, every single word, jot and tittle. And thank God, I give you the praise that she said it's true. Now, what say ye, listener? What say ye, listener? Do you understand that your if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, that he was so destroyed and shredded and just horribly disfigured for you, for you, more than any other man in all history, what say ye decide today? Let's talk about this word form that Trinitarians love to throw around let's talk about this word now we see in Isaiah 52 we just read form we see in Philippians chapter 2 6 and 7 and this YouTube subscriber asked me about these three scriptures who being this is Jesus Christ being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Again, I'm going to respond to this. And then if we see Daniel chapter 3, 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And I have come meet my kinsman redeemer study. I go into this. 
Now this is my response. Let's talk about the word form. As I've repeated over and over, we must apply when doing Bible study here and good solid Bible hermeneutics, we must apply context, exegesis, which in this context is using grammar, syntax, and vocabulary, and we must harmonize scripture with scripture. So let's take an honest look at the context of Isaiah 52, 12 through 14, Philippians 2, 6 and 7, and Daniel 3, 25 in these three examples. Now we know we're talking about the image of Jesus Christ. When we have examined the word form in this context, we have the following. Form. In the Oxford English Dictionary, page 1059, this is a visual aspect the image of a body. Aspect in the English Dictionary, Oxford English Dictionary, page 123, it means the sight of something, the action of looking, viewing something, the appearance of something. We can also look at the Greek Strong's 3444, which means an external appearance. And the Hebrew Strong's, using looking at Daniel, we examine this word and then go to the ancient Hebrew lexicon, 1443. We see that any time here form is used in this context, we're talking about the appearance of visual image. We have, of course, the harmonizing part. We can harmonize this perfectly with Scripture in Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. We know this Scripture that we know that Jesus Christ is the image, is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Bodily means a person. He is the image of God as, as a person, is only one person. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, I really feel strongly led to ask you to open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 53 with me. Isaiah chapter 53 in the King James Bible. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. This literally means that he hath no form nor comeliness, literally means that his appearance is nothing to be made attention of. He's basically someone you wouldn't give a second look at, and not even particularly handsome. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. This clarifies it, that you would not see Jesus Christ when he was walking on the earth bringing himself through the womb of the virgin, was not even physically attractive. Verse 3, he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. This is using the plural, first person, preposition. This means all of us people. No, not me. Yes, we, all of us. We want nothing, had nothing to do with this man. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And then guess what? We all, we like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I must stop here. Trinitarians love to say the Lord. 
This is an old man, the old man in heaven when Jesus was another God walking around on earth is the Son of Man, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. No. Jesus Christ himself, Godhead, is not bow child sacrifice. There was not an old man up in heaven called God the Father who was placing this iniquity on his son that he created. That is a lie from the Trinitarians and from the pits of hell behind every preacher of all these Laodicean churches. Make very clear. I go back to these links, people. I go back to these links I posted here. If this is confounding to you, see why Jesus Christ is the only person. There's only one God, and that is Jesus Christ. Brother Cameron goes into this in detail. Why I love using Daniel chapter 713 to debunk Trinitarians, it trips them up. Why Jesus Christ, within whom the Father dwells, the shock and awe of Paul, revealing more of the Lamb who was slain, to know him who laid the foundation of the earth. Why did I put these studies in here? Because if you've been taught the Trinity like all of us were, you're going to think there's three gods. Well, really, I don't know what happened to the third god, that one that was walking around, uh, the one that was a, a dove. But he's not really a dove, but he is, but yeah. So, no, that, there's only one God, and that is Jesus Christ himself, God Almighty. So, let's continue. <clears throat> I needed to stop there. Uh, in verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare the, his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there it was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. This again, a Trinitarian would look at this and say, oh, the Lord, that's a different God. That's God the Father. He, he was happy to bruise God the Son, the second person of the trinity that is a lie from the pits of hell from the trinitarian pulpit preaching laodicean brick and mortar apostate train seminarian running a C as a ceo no the lord any time you see lord and this is capitalized in the king james bible this is jesus christ and you will say fool you will say the fool will say Oh, are you saying that Jesus Christ, it pleased him to bruise himself? Harmonize scripture with scripture. He brought himself through the womb, it's all in the studies, and he offered himself willingly as the sacrifice. Read my study in there, how it connects with Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22, when Abraham had his only begotten son Isaac on the altar to offer his son as a sacrifice, and God said, no, 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 stop. I will offer you, I will give you your sac the sacrifice. The ram is the perfect type and shadow of the what? The ram represents the atonement the sacrifice offering the sacrifice of jesus christ himself willingly willingly offering himself and it pleased him to put himself up here he had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering 
for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It's the same thing in my studies. When you see that Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father, that is saying the right hand at the right hand, on the right hand, is uh, the metaphor that means all to whom all power and authority is given. In verse 11, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. In the studies that I ask you to read, we know that the Father is spirit. No man has seen God at any time as spirit, functioning as the soul within and part of Jesus Christ himself. Just as we created in his image, we have a body, we're created after his likeness. Likeness means the essence of him being three parts, spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 uh, In verse 12, Therefore will I divide with him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. He and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This, All of this prophecy here in Isaiah, hundreds of years before Jesus came to the earth as the, through the virgin, the womb of the virgin, this was all fulfilled at his crucifixion. When we can imagine and just come before our Lord and say the perfect, horrible sacrifice that you suffered for my sins. You died for my sins, Jesus. This brings us the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit bring the listener of this video, if they are not saved, to godly sorrow. That means pure contrition, a broken heart, knowing that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. This is your Redeemer. Know this if you're not saved. Call on Jesus now and come fall on your knees. Believe on him. For the saints, those who are saved, may we stop and take moment in our devotions and prayers thanking our precious Savior for dying a terrible death for us. Even so, we thank you, Lord. We're looking forward to our blessed hope, the day when we will reunite with you, Lord, as our bridegroom. We pray this. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.